Welcome fabricators. This is a question that we get over and over again, especially on our pipeline parameter videos. How do we pass a parameter from a notebook back to a pipeline? Well, that's what we're covering today on Tales from the Field. All right. So we're going to talk about pipelines, parameters, how we get that parameter from a notebook to a data pipeline. First, I want to make sure and give a shout out to Nero on the Microsoft Fabric Community website and forum. Nero has a lot of amazing answers out there. And one of the answers that I found that we're going to use in this video, I want to attribute directly to Nero and the wonderful answers he's been providing for the commentary. Nero, if you're out there, thank you so much for all that you do. Okay. So let's get straight into this because the question you're going to have is how do I take a parameter? How do I get it from a notebook and then get it to where I can use it in a pipeline? Let's go ahead and get over to that great content right now. I'm in my fabric workspace and I'm going to start out. I've got three notebooks and I've got one data pipeline. The first create parameter output table. We're going to create a table to store a variable that we're going to pass from notebook to notebook. The second one is pass to the pipeline. And then the third one is write it to the lake house. We're going to use the data pipeline to connect those last two together. We're going to start out in the create table and we're just going to do this from scratch. I'm going to say whack whack SQL to be able to use Spark SQL and create table. We're going to call the table exactly what it is. Output parameter info. I'm going to put two columns in there, my ID and also parameter output info. This is going to be a string because we're passing a string variable from one to the other. Then what I'll do is after this runs, it kicks up our default Spark pool and it executes. I'm going to refresh, see that my table is there, see that my columns are in place. And now let's add one more cell where we say select star from table output parameter info. Reason being is we're going to use this a little bit later to validate that we've written our data correctly. Right now, there shouldn't be any data in here, so I don't expect this to return any results. Now we go to the past parameter info. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle a parameter cell and I'm going to set my variable, variable one. And this is going to be original text from the pass parameter, pass parameters to pipeline notebook. So this is the variable. I want to pass this from this notebook to my next notebook and write it to a lake house. The way we're going to do this MS Spark Utils notebook exit, and then I'm going to pass the value variable one. Now I'm going to come to my data pipeline. I'm going to add a notebook task. We're going to call this what it is, parameter from notebook. We're going to go to settings. We're going to go to the filter. We're going to select our past parameter pipeline notebook. And now let's go ahead and let's run this. So what I want to do, I want to show you this every step of the way that we get to it. I'm going to fast forward through this running so that way we get to the successful run. And then the key thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the output statement. So I go and I get the output. I'm going to use the clippy, the clip, the clippy, the clip to, the clip to clipboard. And then we're going to see the exit value, the original text passed from parameter notebook right there. There it is. Now it didn't set it as variable one. It sets it as exit value. That's important for us to realize. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a set variable because we need to be able to set this variable so we can use it later in our pipeline. We're going to call this exactly what it is, var from notebook. This is our variable. I'm going to add our on success line so that way we sequentially create our variable. There's no new variable I have yet. You'll see there's no results. So I'm going to name one message. It's going to be a string. And that's what we're going to set our variable as. I go to add dynamic content. And you can see there's parameters from notebook. And then I need to add something here. I need to add specifically result.exit value because it's that exit value we're trying to get from the notebook activity. That's what's passing our values out. I'm going to go ahead and run this. And once we run this again, we're going to fast forward. First, we have to execute our Spark notebook. Then we need to populate our variable. What we want to do is we want to validate that this output is looking exactly like we want it to. So first I come to the parameters and I can see just like last time, I blow this up. There's our exit value, original text, pass parameters to pipeline notebook. Now, if I go to the variable, 
I can see original text passed from parameters to pipeline notebooks. There we go. It's a little bit of fabric magic right there. We have passed a parameter from one notebook and set it in a variable. Now let's finish this up. So we're going to go and we're going to toggle the output because we need a parameter cell here. New var. We're just going to leave this empty because we want to override this variable. And then we're going to do an insert statement. I'm going to call Spark SQL and I want to do an insert into uh, our table output parameter info. We're going to alias this with uh, demo underscore edw so we can pull the name info. And then I'm going to pull values. Now I'm going to pass bound one and bound two. Now, the reason I'm doing two of these is I want to set the number one and also the variable. So I actually need another variable. I'm going to say new number. We're going to get to this in our second video where I show you how to be able to pass multiple parameters. So on this first one, I set new number and I set new var. And then what I need to do is I need to create a parameter and a notebook task, call my notebook and overwrite that. So that's exactly what we do. We call our notebook. Let's go ahead and rename this to exactly what it is write to table. That's what we want to do, write to table. Now we're going to get our notebook, write parameter to lake house. I'm going to add a base parameter. At this point in time, I only need one because I'm only passing one value through. And we're going to say new var. It needs to be the same variable that we set within the notebook. It's a string. And then in value, I'm going to add dynamic content. Now it's hard to see, but over on the right hand side, there's actually a variables tab there. And there's the variable message. We click on that. We click OK we're good to be able to run this. Now I'm going to fast forward through this because we've got two notebooks and a variable to set. But the goal is we've set our variable in notebook one. We pass it through to a set variable. We pass it through to notebook two and we write it to our table. So we've got the output for this and we're able to now use this in another notebook to be able to pass this back and forth in a pipeline. Now let's validate. Let's go and let's rerun our select star from output parameter info. Let's see what we get back. We should have one row in our table where we set the value one and then we passed our value from notebook to notebook. And there we go. Original text passed parameters to pipeline notebook. A little more fabric magic. How fantastic. This is exactly what we wanted to do, exactly what we wanted to accomplish. I know folks have been asking about how to do this for a long time. How do I get a parameter? Well, keep in mind, what we're going to do is next week, I'm going to do another video where I show you how I send multiple parameters out for us to be able to insert into the table. We're going to keep this same base functionality. So if you're looking for part one of the video of how we set everything up, that's here. When we jump into part two, we're just going to keep going as if this is the end of the video and I'm going to show you how we get those multiple values. Once again, thank you so much to Nero. Really appreciate the hard work on the forums and Thank you to everyone out there. As always, I appreciate you joining us on Tales from the Field. Be good to Bye. Good food, good mood, blood in circulation. One step at a time, yeah, that's how you make it. Set a goal you control and the steps you take them. 